Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, a channel about making computer role-playing games using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. In this video, I would like to talk about movement points and how I have uh, taken a system of movement points from the game which I'm adapting and uh, turned it into code for Twine. Um, so what is movement points? Well, it is a system used in a lot of board games in particular and used in the board game which I'm adapting, Source of the Nile. And the way that it works is that uh, each turn a player starts with a certain number of points and each action that they can take will consume or cost a certain number of points and they can only take actions that uh, cost fewer points than they have or the same number of points as they have, and they keep going until they run out of points. The reason for having um, a system like that, um, in some games, you don't need it. In some games, you can just say, well, this piece can move up to three spaces a turn, or this, this piece can move four spaces a turn, unless it's got this, in which case it can move six spaces, um, and so on. But Source of the Nile has quite a lot of different types of terrain. And so um, it wants, for example, it, it wants it to be slower to move through jungle than to move through open plains. It also has uh, different types of expeditions. It wants um, expeditions that are uh, using horses to move more quickly than expeditions that are on foot, for example. And it also has a system of penalties for waterborne expeditions, where um, if you have only a few bearers uh, rowing each canoe, then you're going to be slowed down. Um, and so you can't simulate all that by saying, well, you can move a set number of spaces per turn. You have to have, you have, to have points, um, and then you have different costs for different things. Um, it also has a system um, where you can choose to be reckless and get more movement points, so you're moving more quickly, but um, that has other disadvantages that we'll um, look at in later videos. Or you can choose to be cautious, um, where you have fewer movement points, but you get a few advantages, which, again, we will only be dealing with uh, later. So let's first have a look at how the system works. So we have this, um, this screen, which we've seen before. It tells us that we're going to be encountering a river running through mountainous jungle. And it asks us what um, type of expedition we want. So let's say we want uh, to go by canoe to start with. Um, we can always change our mind down here. But um, so the way that um, movement points work, um, it's not going to show us anything until we have an expedition that can actually set out. So let's get a few gifts and a few rations. Uh, we'll get a couple of canoes. Now we can see that we need at least one bearer per canoe to be able to travel, of course, because the bearers are the ones that um, will row the canoe. And we see here that we are um, able to move, but we're going to get quite a penalty. It says the expedition has fewer than two bearers per canoe. Well, that's true. We have two canoes and two bearers, so we have exactly one bearer per canoe. And so we'll receive a large penalty to its movement speed. So the way that it works um, is that you get, if you're on foot, you get one, two, or four movement points, depending on your activity level, which is whether you choose to be reckless, normal, or cautious. And if you have a mounted or canoe expedition, you get two, four, and six movement points. Um, but we will have a large penalty with the expedition set up like this. A large penalty means uh, minus three movement points. So if we scroll down a bit, we can see if you wish to set out, choose your activity level. And it says normal and reckless. Normally it would say cautious, normal, and reckless. But because a cautious uh, movement only gets two movement points, and because we have a penalty of three movement points, that means we would have 
minus one movement point per turn, and it doesn't that doesn't mean we you know that doesn't make any sense. We wouldn't be able to do anything. So because we have this uh, sort of extreme penalty because we have a very low number of um, bearers per canoe, we don't get the uh, option to be cautious. And in the fiction of the game, you could justify that by saying that the bearers are having such a hard time that you're moving, um, you're moving so slowly that you know you can't really, um, you don't really gain the benefits of it, I guess. Um, but anyway, let's um, let's get some let's get some more bearers, and we'll see that as we get more bearers. Um, now it says we get a moderate penalty, which is a penalty of two movement points. Um, but if we get say eight bearers, well now we have the option to be to be reckless. So we have at least four bearers per canoe, and so we receive a small penalty, which is minus one um, movement points. So if we know the rules of um, source of the Nile, we should predict that we would normally have two, four, or six movement points, but because of this penalty, we, that'll go down to one, three, or five. So if we set out now, we would predict that, if we click that one, we would predict that we would get five movement points. And I mean, of course, normally we wouldn't set out with such a small expedition. Um, but for the purposes of testing it, um, let's click this, and it says you have five movement points. So we can see that the thing is is working as it's as it's intended. So that is uh, what it looks like in the um, in the game when we run it. So let's have a look at the code that allows that to happen. So we have our oops, we have our game here. Now we have a couple of we have a couple of screens here. Um, this is a system from later in the game that I just started typing. Um, this this is these two are not going to be relevant. And as you can see, nothing connects to it, and um, it's just almost notes for me. So the main game is really up here. You can see that there's a a new. Um, screen here, this screen, this uh, page, sorry I shouldn't have said screen, there's a new page here, this page which was blank has now got some code in it, um, and there's some, um, a couple of extra variables, so let's zoom in, alright, so you probably remember E is the type of expedition that we are trying to set up, where one is foot, two is mounted, and three is canoe, but as we've seen, we don't always get the type of expedition that we want. In other words, we might try and set up a mounted expedition and we find that um, actually you're going to have to set out on foot if you want to if you want to set up your expedition that way. So we need to distinguish what we're trying to what the user is trying to do and what the user has actually done. So we have E, which is the type of expedition that they're trying to set up. Um, and we need we need this. Uh, because it affects um, what they can buy. So, for example, if we had a expedition that can set out on foot, but we're trying to set up a mounted expedition, we would still have the option to buy animals. So we need to have both the E and the EM. Um, so EM is a bit more complicated because it has zero, which is just you can't set out at all, and then we have one, two, and three, which are foot, met, foot mounted and canoe. Three is a canoe able to move at full speed. And then we have these extra options, which are four, uh, four five, and six, which are just a canoe expedition, which can set out with a one movement point, two movement point, or three movement point penalty. Um, that is actually that there. Uh, oh, that's right. And there's and there's another variable which is dollars MP, which stands for movement points, of course. So, when we um, are in the outfit expedition screen, um, we just, we have these, we have this note here. This probably should be a return like that, but anyway, um, we have the same, the same note as before. We have the code for uh, adding and subtracting different things 
to our expedition. Um, the, cha the change is only going to come when we get to the... Yeah, here we are. This is the, uh, the part where it says check ratio of gear to bearers, canoes, etc. Depends on expedition type. And this is going to give us EM, in other words, um, what have we actually created. So, for example, if E equals 1, in other words, we're trying to set up a foot expedition, we know that EM is only going to be 0 or 1, um, i.e. we can't set out or we can set out on foot. So this is relatively simple. All we do is every time we have one of these messages, which, set, which is like, well, you can't set out because of X, or you can set out, or you can set out but only on foot, we also have a command that says set EM equals whatever the appropriate one is. So in this case, where the message is you don't have enough bearers to carry the equipment, EM will be set to zero. We also have um, where we we had a message that says uh, if you want you can set out and then you press the button set out to continue. We have an include which says include uh, square bracket square bracket set out and square bracket and square bracket. So I'll show you that set out before we go any further. It just says, if you wish to set out, choose your activity level. And if EM is less than five, it has a button that allows us to choose cautious. And it's every button here is going to take us to the page MP, where it'll um, determine our movement points. Um, if EM is less than five, that's because if EM is five or six, then we don't get to choose uh, a cautious pace because um, that's a canoe expedition with a quite severe penalty and presumably it's um, sort of quite slow and a bit stressful. I, I, I guess that's the justification. I don't know that it completely makes sense, but anyway, um, I'm, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll set it up as the board game rules are and then perhaps change it if I you know, if I uh, feel like I have to. Um, so we have the button that says cautious and takes us to MP and it sets dollars AL equal to one and then we always have buttons for normal and reckless and they also go to MP but they set AL to be two or three. Uh, AL of course stands for activity level with one being cautious, two being normal and three being reckless. So let's have a look at MP when we go to MP. We have these commands which we've already had. This is just uh, adjusting the money. CO is the sort of cost of the expedition, and because we've decided to set out, then we set we we reduce our money by by that. Um, I is just we we don't actually use that yet. It's just, it's it's how far inland we are. And then we have a little note that says um, how many movement points we get on foot. We get one, two, or four. And on animals or in canoes, we get two, four, or six. So the way it works is if EM equals one, in other words, if we're a foot, a foot expedition, then we set movement points to be equal to the activity level, which remember was one, two, or three. But if that results in the MP being three, then we set it to four because it's not one, two, and three, it's one, two, and four. And otherwise, we set MP equal to AL times 2, so that makes sense. 1, 2, and 3 becomes 2, 4, and 6. And then if EM is greater than 3, then we have this penalty. Set MP equals MP minus EM minus 3. Um, because EM4 is a uh, penalty of 1, EM5 is a penalty of 2, EM6 is a penalty of 3, so, so that works out. And then it just says you have MP movement points. So let's go back to Outfit Expedition and scroll down to where we where we were before. So we have um, where did we, we were up to our first there we go, we we're up to our first option uh, example of including including set out, and then similarly um, with a ridden expedition, we have 
em equals zero. So because em equals zero, meaning we can't yet set out, we don't really need to set em to zero because it's not really used. When, when it's zero, when the expedition can't set out, we, we're not going to continue to the parts that deal with uh, that deal with em. So it's really just for my sort of sense of symmetry that I bother doing this. But um, when we set it to to two, then the expedition is able to move at writing pace, and because we're able to set out, we include that set out page that uh, I showed you before, and um, uh, of course, this is the same for the rest of the code. If if the expedition can, any case where the expedition can set out, we um, we set em to whatever it will be, and we include that set out. And that's true for mounted expeditions, and then of course it's true for canoe expeditions as well. And so that is how movement points work, or at least that's how uh, the first part of movement points works, which is which is determining how many you have for a given turn. Um, what we're going to look at in the next turn is is spending those movement points, how we um, how we uh, how we travel, basically. So I hope that was useful or interesting to at least some of you, and I hope you will tune in next time.